I think that Bernie Sanders did a really great job at the Democratic debate in Ohio. It was extremely disappointing that Amy Klobuchar was literally called on more than Bernie Sanders. She got more speaking time than Bernie Sanders. And that is so frustrating when Bernie Sanders is one of the three frontrunners. However, with the time that Bernie Sanders had, I think he used it really effectively. Now, what was frustrating to me is that after ignoring Bernie Sanders for, it seemed like, 30 to 40 minutes, um... Aaron Burnett, who has previously attacked Bernie Sanders, I think arbitrarily so, she decided to ask him a question about his health. And Bernie, I think, handled that extremely well, and his response was actually not only reassuring, but even charming. Senator, we are all very glad you're feeling well, as you just said. Um, but, but there is a question on a lot of people's minds, and I want to address it tonight. You're 78 years old, and you just had a heart attack. How do you reassure Democratic voters that you're up to the stress of the presidency? Well, uh, let me invite you all to a major rally we're having in Queens, New York, BernieSanders.com. We're going to have a special guest at that event. And we are going to be mounting a vigorous campaign all over this country. That is how I think I can reassure the American people. But let me take this moment, if I might, uh, to thank so many people uh, from all over this country, including many of my colleagues up here, for their love, for their prayers, for their well wishes. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I'm so happy to be back here with you this evening. So that was great. I feel like what Bernie Sanders did there, it was probably enough to quell fears about his health. I mean, who knows, because the media is going to drum up whatever narrative they think will help them defeat Bernie Sanders. However, if you're an average voter, and you're, you're watching this and you realize that this man who's talking, who has this much energy, just had a heart attack. It's almost unbelievable. Like, he doesn't seem like someone who, you know, a week and a half ago or so, he was in the hospital because he had a heart attack. Like, it doesn't seem like that, right? So I think that voters, they saw what they needed from Bernie Sanders in terms of health. So I truly feel like... We can close that chapter and move on. Hopefully, again, you know, there's no guarantees with the mainstream media and what they want to use to attack Bernie. But if I had to guess, they're going to move on to the next line of attack if they do believe that he is, in fact, uh, a threat again. Um, but what I really want to talk about in this video with regard to Bernie Sanders' performance is where I think he improved. Going into this debate, in my pre-debate analysis, I did say I wanted him to start going on the offensive, right? Him and Elizabeth Warren have a non-aggression pact. They literally agreed to this. Um, and we found out about it, I think, in June or July. So they have agreed to not attack each other. I wanted him to start indirectly attacking Elizabeth Warren. Don't mention her by name, but just kind of throw everyone under the bus and explain why you're better, why you're the only senator who hasn't voted for Donald Trump's military budgets. And obviously, you're including Elizabeth Warren in that group of people. So criticize her indirectly so you don't be viewed as someone who's overly aggressive. Uh, but when it comes to Joe Biden, I don't think there's any reason for him to not attack Joe Biden by name, take the gloves off, because Joe Biden attacks Bernie Sanders, right? Um, and Bernie Sanders should be able to defend himself and also be more ruthless in his criticism. So Bernie Sanders, I wanted him to attack Joe Biden, and he did. So this is the clip of a little bit of his criticism of Joe Biden. Um, take a look, and then I'll, I'll tell you my thoughts on that afterwards. You know what you also got done, and I say this as a good friend, you got the disastrous war in Iraq done. You got a bankruptcy bill, which is hurting middle-class families all over this country. You got trade agreements like NAFTA and PNTR with China done, which have cost us 4 million jobs. So as I said in my full debate analysis, you can watch that, it's up on the channel now. Um, I think that Bernie Sanders was very strong here. He was assertive. He needs to demonstrate strength to communicate to voters that he is a leader. He's strong enough to take on Trump because he's willing to take on his opponents in this primary. Um, so even though that was good, I will say this. Bernie has got to take that and amp it up exponentially. Like that attack needs to be louder, more aggressive. Like I'm not necessarily as concerned with the tone as I am about the content. Um, first of all, you can literally list all the things that Joe Biden has done in his career that are egregious and you would have at least 
10 minutes of content if you weren't interrupted. Now, he would be interrupted by the moderators because he was interrupted pretty frequently. Um, Joe Biden wasn't, but that's a different story. Um, but what you want to do is you want to front load your criticism with the most um, important criticisms that you have of Joe Biden that will be the most punchy, most effective, and most persuasive. And I think Bernie Sanders did that, but he's got to get more aggressive. He's got to be more aggressive and don't qualify your criticism of Joe Biden with Joe Biden is my friend, you know, but so this is what I have to say about your views on healthcare and the Iraq war. You're wasting time. Just cut straight to the chase. We know that Joe Biden is your friend. You've told us a million times, Bernie. What we need you to do is attack Joe Biden and take the gloves off. Bernie Sanders doesn't like to do this. Like he's a good natured person. He doesn't like to criticize people who he views as friends. You know, he's not overly confrontational if he doesn't need to be. But Bernie, you need to be. You need to change with the times. And this isn't an era where, you know, you should be prideful at the fact that you've never run a negative campaign ad in your life. That's fine. But in 2020, if you want to win when you are a distant third place, you have to take the gloves off. You've got to hit them hard. And I don't want to, you know, harp on Bernie too hard because I think that he's been doing a phenomenal job uh, lately, um, you have to draw contrasts and you have to directly criticize someone like Joe Biden. He did that here. He gave me what I wanted. So I don't want to act like I'm not grateful for his performance because I think his performance was great. I think that he was probably one of the winners. But to really make it so he is a clear winner, not just one of the winners, we want him to be the winner, right? We want it to be undeniable so any pundit who says he lost looks disingenuous. The way he does that is he is constantly on the offensive and what he needs to do is get very specific in his criticisms and tie his policy disagreements to his opponent's corruption so what i mean by that is when pete Buttigieg says that uh, bernie sanders wants to throw millions of people off of their health insurance plan or ab klobuchar says that too he needs to say listen Understand why they're repeating these talking points straight from the health insurance industry. It is because they don't support Medicare for all and that they're, they're taking their money to adopt this position. It's the result of corruption. These people are corrupt. So you're not hearing from a politician with a policy disagreement that, you know, is different from mine. You're hearing a stooge of corporate America. Like, that's what he needs to say. Call out Joe Biden. Call out the money that he has taken from defense contractors. Call out their corruption, right? Make them seem like the elitists that they are, because they are elitists. But Bernie Sanders needs to do a good job at communicating this to voters because I don't think they know it. Like, we shouldn't have to watch these people attack Medicare for All as if they're good faith actors who just so happen to disagree with that policy position. No, they're attacking it because they are bankrolled by special interests. They're taking money from Big Pharma, from the health insurance industry, and that's why they're saying what they're saying. You've got to call that out, Bernie. You've got to call that out. And also, uh, be a little bit more forceful when you talk about corruption, just generally speaking. In almost every statement he makes, he should acknowledge that his position is based on the fact that he's not bought off, unlike his opponents. He's not taking money from billionaires. He doesn't have a single billionaire donor, and he hasn't taken a single dime from a health insurance company. They don't like me, and I'm glad they don't like me. In fact, I welcome their hatred. That's what I want to see. So I like what he did. Again, I just want to see some improvement and for him to kind of sharpen his craft a little bit. I'll leave that there. Great performance, just needs to work on his criticism of his opponents a little bit.